Hello everybody, in this video we are going to discuss about metabolic acidosis. So in metabolic acidosis, the first thing to happen is bicarbonate degrees. And because of that, pH will go down. And uh, next what happens is respiratory compensation. So both PCO2 and bicarb go in the same direction during compensation. So PCO2 goes down as well. So here this guy is wondering how much PCO2 will go down. So we will give him a drink and we will answer his question. There are three formulas for it. Number one is Winter's equation. As you can see, PCO2 is equal to 1.5 times bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2. And second equation is bicarb plus 15. And the third equation is PCO2 is equal to decimal digit of pH. That means if pH is 7.24, then uh, PCO2 should be 24. But it is used only in mild to moderate metabolic acidosis. So we will evaluate an ABG here. As you can see, pH is low. So it is acidosis and uh, bicarb is also low uh, so it is uh, metabolic acidosis and uh, pco2 is 33 so now the question is whether it is appropriately compensated or not so we use winter's equation here as you can see uh, when in according to winter's equation it should be 33 to 37 pco2 is 33 so it is appropriately compensated Another formula bicarb plus 15 is equal to 33. Again, it looks like it is appropriately compensated. So it is called simple metabolic acidosis. So this guy here is actually getting stressed out evaluating an ABG. So we will help him. So here pH is low, bicarb is also low, and PCO2 is equal to 37. So pH low is acidosis, bicarb low is metabolic acidosis. And now the question is whether PCO to 37 is it appropriately compensated. So we, we use the Winter's equation, uh, which I prefer. And uh, according to Winter's equation, it should be 27 to 31, but PCO2 is way high. So it's not appropriately compensated. We use another equation, bicarb plus 15, it's 29. Actual PCO2 is 37, so it's not appropriately compensated. So there are two processes going on here. One is metabolic acidosis, which is low bicarb and one is respiratory acidosis, it is inappropriately elevated PCO2. And uh, it's always important to consider clinical picture in evaluating any ABG disorders. So we are going to evaluate another ABG. As you can see here, pH is low, so acidosis, bicarb is low, so metabolic acidosis, and the PCO2 is 19. So whether it is appropriately compensated or not, uh, according to Winter's equation, it is. So it is simple metabolic acidosis. So after diagnosing simple metabolic acidosis, we should evaluate the cause for it. So what is the next step? Is checking the anion gap. So if the anion gap is high, which is greater than 20, uh, in this case, we will see what are the causes. So the common causes of high anion gap metabolic acidosis are as follows. Ketoacidosis, which is usually seen in diabetic patients. And uh, next is lactic acidosis, which is usually seen in septic patients with hypotension. And uh, the other is acute or chronic kidney diseases also can cause high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And uh, salicylate intoxicity can also cause a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And uh, toxic alcohol ingestion, especially methanol, ethylene glycol, isopropyl alcohol, can also cause a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, we are going to discuss a little bit more about it. So, for toxic alcohol ingestion, if there is suspicion for it, according to the history, then you should measure plasma osmolar gap, which is equal to measured osmolality minus calculated osmolarity. Measured osmolarity is what you get uh, when you do a blood test for serum osmolarity. And the calculated osmolality, you got to calculate, which is two times sodium plus glucose plus urea uh, in standard units. If glucose and uh, blood urea nitrogen is measured in milligram per deciliter, then this is the formula. So the normal osmolar gap is usually less than 10 milliosmoles per liter. If it is elevated, 
then the causes are methanol induction, ethylene glycol induction, isopropyl alcohol induction, and also in large in taking large quantities of regular ethanol also can cause high osmolal gap. So we all the levels needs to be sent, but we can't wait for the results of the levels as it is an emergency and we should start treatment based on the history and based on the high osmolal gap. So airway should be protected in these patients and uh, these patients will usually have hypotension. So uh, IV fluids needs to be used and if still hypotensive vasopressors needs to be used. And also the antidote fomipazole should be given. If methanol poisoning is suspected then folic acid should be given to these patients along with homipazole and if ethylene glycol poisoning is suspected then patients should be given thymine and as well as pyridoxin. Some of these patients also require hemodialysis so it's important to involve nephrologists early on in these patients. Now if there is normal anion gap with metabolic acidosis in these patients usually chloride is also high so they are also called hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis so what are the causes for it it is broadly divided into loss of bicarb and decreased renal acid secretion so what causes loss of bicarb one is diarrhea and the second one is type 2 rta so type in type 2 RTA the primary problem is uh, impairment of reabsorption of bicarb in proximal tubule. Uh, so but the urine pH is less than 5 because after the bicarb reaches lower threshold uh, urine will be acidified appropriately and uh, usually the bicarb is greater than 15 because some of the bicarb will be reabsorbed from the collecting duct and uh, hypokalemia uh, typically is seen in these patients and also some patients also have osteomalacia. And the other uh, classification of hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis is decreased renal acid secretion. In type 1 RTA, there will be reduced renal acid secretion in the collecting duct. So urine pH will be greater than 5. Bicarb level varies in these patients. It can be as low as less than 10. Another cause is type 4 RTA, most common form. In this, there will be hypoaldosteronism. There will be reduced acid secretion and potassium secretion in the collecting duct which can cause hyperkalemia and as HATPase um, is functional, urine is acidified so pH is less than 5 and these patients will usually have CKD also and uh, these are my references. Thank you for watching the video.